Welcome to part two of my raised air intake design video series. In part one, I explained that I'm going to be making a snorkel or raised air intake for my Freelander 2. This will involve making a air box to sit on the wing with some kind of ducting up to uh, an intake at the top. I've decided to keep the factory duct, the black plastic duct that is inside the wing, down to about there, and then replace the plastic and fibre factory duct, which goes from about there round to the air box here, the air filter box. I'm going to replace that with some silicone hose. In a separate video, I'm also going to be replacing this duct across here. That's not really part of the raised air intake, but it is part of the air path towards the engine. I'll be doing that piece as a separate video, and the, the snorkel video series will focus on going from here, from here, round to here, and then up the wing. In the last video, I showed you some prototype pieces of 3D printed plastic that I'd made. I made an adapter to go in there, an adapter to interface a silicone hose onto the end of the black plastic duct in there, and then I also made a piece that would fit into these slots here once that grill is removed. Since then, I've been refining those designs and we can now look at the latest 3D modeling that I've done on the computer. And then I'll show you the latest 3D prints that I've made. So we can see here the adapter that will go onto the air filter box. I've designed this in a website called Tinkercad. It allows you to do 3D designs 3D drawings for printing on 3D printers. So we can see here that I've created the wedge-shaped plate here and then this uh, angled tube coming up. Originally that tube was uh, straight up but looking into the engine bay the factory duct does leave the airbox at a bit of a downward angle so I've adjusted that so that it's now leaning at about, I think it's about 15 degrees on that one. That may need to be adjusted further. We might even need to bring it out at, at a sort of down and to the right kind of angle. Um, we, we'll see, really. I, I think a 60 degree hose should fit onto that correctly. The diameter of this is a 60 millimeter diameter. And if I zoom in, you can see there, I've put some, oh, a, a, um, a sort of a ring, it's not a, not a barb, it's more just a sort of um, slightly elliptical ring there just to allow the, the hose clamp to, to hold that, uh, hold a silicon hose tightly on there without it slipping off. So what we'll do now is open up that, if we export that to another piece of software called Cura. Cura is what's called a slicing application and that is the piece of software which will actually create the G-code file which we load into the 3D printer to print the object. So just wait for that to open up. And then we should see something like this. So very, very similar, but it's more just giving us a, a clearer view of what the item will actually look like when it's printed. There we go there, so you can see that um, ring around the tube there. The tube wall is about five millimeters thick. I mean, this will be um, eventually cast in hard polyurethane. So I'll print it in PLA. And when I know the fit is absolutely right, I will submerge this in silicone resin, make a mold and then pour PLA and uh, pour um, hard polyurethane in there to, to make a, uh, a, an item that looks exactly the same but is a, 
much more durable plastic. So here we can see those two holes that I put at the bottom just to allow a couple of self-tapper screws to go in and stop that from, from dropping back out of the, the air box. Uh, it is a sort of a wedge shape there, very slight wedge, but um, <clears throat> that, that's not enough to sort of hold it in securely. So I'm going to have to drill a couple of holes into the air box and put a couple of screws in. This um, ring down here is really just a sort of reinforcing ring. It serves as an end stop for the, uh, for the silicone hose. Okay, so what I do now is export that to a G-code file, put that onto an SD card and load that into my 3D printer and then print off the part. What we'll do now is quickly have a quick look at the other duct adapter, duct adapter 1. So this one is the adapter which will go onto the end of the factory black plastic duct. So this is what it looks like in the 3D design software in Tinkercad. Again, we've got that same ring around here, 60 millimeter diameter, outer diameter tube here with a five millimeter thick wall, a hole going all through the middle. And then this bottom part here is exactly the right shape to interface to that black, to the end, the, the frontmost end of that black factory duct. I've put in a couple of little reinforcing um, sort of bits of plastic there just to just to kind of tie the two parts together nice and strongly. So if we export that now, we'll see what that looks like as a as a sort of solid object. Now this one will also need to be cast in polyurethane, uh, but that's going to be a little bit more tricky due to the sort of compound shape of it. It's not really a shape that can just be pulled out of a mould easily, so I'm going to have to have a bit of a think about that. Might have to do a very clever two-part mould, so um, we'll, we'll cross that bridge as we come to it. Alright, here's the item now. So you can see this tube here will take the uh, end of a 60 millimeter silicone, like a blue silicone, kind of um, like an intercooler hose type of silicone pipe. Uh, so the hose will, will probably have a, a 60 degree and a 90 degree bend and then onto here. And then that will be pushed onto the end of the factory duct. Now I may need to make a, a little screw hole somewhere here just to allow that to, to, to fit on nice and securely. Um, but um, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. It might be might better just glue it on or something. But, um, okay, right, let's get those exported out onto the printer and then we can print them and see if they fit on the car. Okay, so now I'm gonna have a look at how these parts may fit on the car. So let's start with this one here. This is our new slanted air filter box adapter. So this one will go on the side of the air box there. Now, the reason why I've slanted that in that pipe slightly is because if we look at this one here, you can see it comes out and it almost immediately goes slightly downwards below this, this here, which is the headlight. Okay, so I don't know if it's easier to see that if I can put my camera in slightly. It might be a bit better. You can see that that actually drops away at quite an angle. My worry with having that pipe coming straight out is that the hose would then immediately have to go downwards, which means yet another elbow on the hose. So what I really want is one 45 degree elbow and then a 90 degree to take it down there because that's already coming out at an angle. So it's not two 90 degrees, it's a 45 plus a 90 uh, with, a, with a bit of... Um, stainless or chrome pipe to join the two together 
and then we have this one here so i've redesigned this with a, a barb there and a slightly taller pipe there now i'll be casting all of these in hard polyurethane the reason why i'm going to use polyurethane is i did try to print in abs but uh it, it just doesn't work abs is a very very difficult material to print it print with it just uh doesn't stick properly to the bed it uh, warps halfway through the print the amount of attempts where I got halfway through printing it and then it all just went wrong ended up in a rat's nest of uh, ABS filament so I gave up with ABS um, tried almost an entire roll of ABS gave it a good shot it just didn't work so these are printed in PLA but PLA is uh, it's a sort of vegetable oil based plastic. It's not really suitable for the, the heat and oil and fumes of an engine bay, really. It'll probably melt or disintegrate or something like that. So I need to cast these in something durable, such as polyurethane. Uh, use a hard, rigid polyurethane rather than a polyurethane rubber. This duct here will sit inside the wing on the end of the black plastic duct. Now there are, there's at least one other snorkel available from Brazil, which has a flexible rubber hose all the way down to a plate here. Why am I not doing that? Well, very simply, it would be great to have a snorkel where all you do is remove this and fit the snorkel. Don't need to worry about any of that lot. I'm going to be replacing the ducting in here, but if I do, if the snorkel works and I do end up making a few and selling them, then one option would be that people will just remove this grill and fit the snorkel, leave the rest of it as it is. Now, I'm changing the ducting in the wing from about here onwards to the airbox purely because I don't like the look of that duct down here. This bit's plastic, but further down, you can't really see it, but there's a sort of a fiber cardboard substance, which doesn't look very airtight or waterproof. So I'm gonna be changing that. But of course, I, it would be nice to, to leave the option available for people to Literally just pull that off, pop the snorkel on, couple of screws, there you go. If you use a, a, a sort of adapter behind there, then you've got to pull out all the plastic liner, put in this adapter, run the hose along, remove all the other ducts, and then you've got to somehow interface it onto here. It's, it's a lot of work for somebody who just wants a, a snorkel on the wing for cosmetic reasons. If you're serious about wading, then I'd recommend going airtight, waterproof, all the way from the top, all the way down to here and possibly further as well. And we can see leaks and things from over there from those joints. Um, I'm gonna go all the way down to there. So now that we've looked at these two adapters, for the duct from the end of the factory black plastic duct in the wing round to there. Let's have a look at my prototype for the <coughs> wing air box. I know this looks a little bit strange, but bear with me. So what I'm gonna do now is remove this. Now, to remove this is quite easy. Really needs two hands, but I've already lifted one corner out. Push it upwards, get your fingers underneath, pull it outwards very carefully, but firmly. Pull it out. Makes a bit of a bang, but that's just the clips unclipping. Pull it downwards. Pull the bottom out and then pull the whole thing downwards. You'll see some clips at the top there that locate 
up in to the wing. So don't pull it out from the top, pull it out from the bottom. If we have a look on the bottom, you'll see there's some sprung clips there. Once you pull that out, you can then press that to remove, to remove the indicator light, indicator repeater light connection. So what I'm going to do now is just get this wing adapter prototype here and you'll see how it works. So what I need to do So these slots here go into the factory duct there. Okay. These are currently too long. I think they need to be shorter. But you can get the idea. So what we're going to end up with is a vertical plate. There'll be a a sort of wall around here, black plastic wall, and then a, an outer cover, a sort of lid that fits onto there, leaving a gap between the lid and this plate of around probably about 20 millimeters. And then on top of here, there'll be some sort of kind of air diffuser sort of arrangement, um, uh, kind of like a like sort of, I want to call it a collector because the air is going out downwards, um, but some sort of uh, domed kind of thing on here with a, a flexi duct, which can then come up there. So the air will come down the snorkel, down the flexi duct into sort of top chamber on top down through here into the chamber here which is sealed up by the outer wall and the lid and then in to here and here to go into the duct down to the air filter and the idea is that that's all completely watertight so a bit of sealant on here these are a very tight snug fit into the factory duct, into the slots on the factory duct. The indicator light will need to be repositioned in the outer cover. I've made a couple of holes here so we can put a couple of screws through to kind of put the whole thing on it. May possibly need more than two screws. Um, not sure yet, really don't really want to start drilling into the bodywork but um, if we have to do that we have to do that we'll see we'll see how how much the whole thing weighs at the end um, it does need to be put on quite securely although what would be nice is to be able to fit this without damaging any of the bodywork so that one day it can just be easily removed and the old drill can just be clipped back on if I ever sell the car uh, might uh, might be better to sell it in uh, a fairly standard state rather than uh, modified up like it is now. So this, this is just a very thin prototype. This will be thicker and I'm going to be casting this out of some rigid hard black polyurethane to make it uh, strong and weatherproof. This is just printed in PLA. So let's pull that back out. Okay. The indicator light wiring just has a hole at the back of this duct, so that will need to be sealed somehow with a grommet, um, just to just to make the whole thing waterproof. But I think as far as a test trial fit, this is just a very thin print, but it does look like it's the right kind of shape so um with that there 
and there's a, a few little adjustments I need to make to the shape. This here needs to be a little bit further out. Um, the alignment with the door, door hinge gap there just needs uh, sorting out a bit. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a start, it's a start. This is a long-term project. In the next video, we're gonna look at making the wall that goes around that. I'll look at casting the polyurethane. So I'll print that correctly in the in a sort of thicker uh, final design. Get that bit done and then look at uh, what I put on top of here to connect up to the snorkel. And we'll also, in the next video, remove the headlight, remove the headlight under tray, remove this and put in our ducting that goes around inside the wing. Okay, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.